There's so many problems with it. Uh, the most important one is that there's not an emergency in Washington anymore. I think it would be a horrific surprise to the over 800 families that have lost a loved one already to this pandemic to think that this is not a crisis. I believe that position is biologically ignorant and humanly heartless. It's just ignorant. We have team coverage tonight as this legal battle gets underway over Governor Inslee's stay-at-home order. Welcome to King 5 News at 5 o'clock. I'm Mark Wright. I'm Joyce Taylor. Republican state lawmakers say now is the time to reopen the state. We begin with King 5's Chris Daniels in Tacoma where that lawsuit was filed. And Chris, this does have the appearance of partisan politics. Yeah, Joyce, and Democrats in Washington state have been quick to jump on that today, but these are Republicans who point to signs like this one here in downtown Tacoma, a business that thought it might reopen, scratched that out and says maybe they'll open by the end of the week. These are Republicans also from the Puget Sound area who have not been part of any protests before and say they believe the emergency is order, and that's why they filed the litigation today. We're not diminishing the loss of life. We need to make that clear. What we're arguing is, is that we had a, you know, an emergency arise. We needed to protect our hospitals to make sure they weren't overrun. We needed to get our resources in place, and we've done that rather successfully. But now it's time to focus with a scalpel rather than a sledgehammer on protecting those most vulnerable. That the state of emergency was necessary at the time, and it is not necessary now. We still don't have the metrics from going from phase two to three to four and beyond. The governor said we were very worried that we'd overwhelm the healthcare system, that so many people would get so sick so fast, we'd run out of hospital beds, we'd run out of ICU space, we'd run out of ventilators. Uh, luckily, that didn't come to pass, but there are no longer any models. The governor doesn't even claim there are models that say if we lifted the shutdown, the healthcare system would be overwhelmed. But our concern is right now is that we're seeing this on a county by county area that it has diminished. Thurston County has had 100 cases, one death. Uh, businesses and families are being affected by this. The, the catastrophe that's happening to our economy, the fact that our budget in the state is going to be so severely impacted that we're not going to have the resources to take care of the most vulnerable in our state. We're not arguing to get rid of social distancing and changes at restaurants and those type of things, but we're saying let's let our businesses come to the table and see how they can open up safely so we can get money back in people's pockets. I spoke with House Minority Leader J.T. Wilcox, a Republican from Yelm today, who is not part of this litigation, but said he did welcome the challenge. He believed that reopening should be done on a county-by-county -county basis, and he also pointed to a Democrat, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who's already announced this week that they will begin phase two in the Golden State by the end of this week, including allowing the opening of certain retail outlets. That's the story for now live in Tacoma. I'm Chris Daniels, King 5 News. Chris, thank you. We continue our team coverage now. Governor Inslee responded to the Republicans' lawsuit in a news conference about 90 minutes ago. And King 5's Vanessa Mishania was there and tells us what he had to say. Vanessa. Joyce, good evening. So that presser wrapped up just about a half hour ago, and although the purpose of it wasn't addressing the lawsuit, the governor did say that he vigorously disagrees with the suit and that the views of the lawmakers behind it are not only short-sighted, but dangerous. So Inslee said to reporters that he hasn't had time to look at that lawsuit very closely, but again, when asked about it, you could tell that he had some pretty strong feelings about it. He called the lawmakers behind the suit ignorant and heartless to think that some people are disposable. Vigorously disagree with them. I think they are not only short-sighted, but dangerous. They are not compliant with the science that is very clear on this, that if we today released all of our efforts, if we stopped in our tracks halfway through this effort or two thirds through this effort, this virus is gonna come back with a vengeance. Very strong words from the governor there. Now, again, the purpose of that press conference was actually to announce the formation of three different community advisory groups, one focusing on health care, the economy, and the social impact of COVID-19. And from what those groups gather, they'll be informing the governor's decision-making moving forward as he continues to reopen the state. So coming up at 9, 10, and 11, I'll have more about that. But for now, live in Seattle, Vanessa Mishania, King 5 News.
All right, Vanessa, thank you. In Walla Walla County, Tyson Foods has resumed limited operations at that meat packing plant hit by the coronavirus outbreak. The plant near Pasco has now been cleaned and the county has impo imposed safety rules such as wearing masks. That facility shut down April 24th after 100 workers tested positive for COVID-19. Almost 150 other employees have also tested positive. That plant employs more than 1,400 people. Well, many meat processing plants are closing across the country. Stores are limiting how much meat someone can buy at once, but that's paying off right now for one company. Today, Kroger stores, which include Fred Meyer and QFC, will start carrying impossible burgers. It's also helping that company, which has seen a drop in restaurant orders. Day one of phase one. For the first time in weeks, golf courses across the state are open. From the South Sound to Snohomish County, we saw golfers out getting fresh air and keeping their distance. Another big change today out on Lake Washington. Boaters were out. People are fishing or soaking up the sunshine. King 5's Drew Mickelson found out what some of those new rules are. It's been six weeks since we've been able to tee it up. But are golfers and anglers really going to be willing to follow all the new social distancing rules? Uh, I've been having withdrawals, basically. It's just great to be out. It's the sound of spring, oh. just about six weeks late. Freaking wonderful, man. Been waiting on it for a while. I, I, I can do something besides chores at home. They're booked all week at Tumwater Valley Golf Club, despite a few new rules. There's no sand bunker rakes, there's no ball washers, there's no benches. And it's twosomes only. The state will allow foursomes, but they have to be from the same household. Tumwater Valley thought it'd be more efficient to limit the groups at two. As we fill the golf course with pairs of people and the golf course flow goes around, once you stick a foursome in the middle of that, then it, it's like a traffic jam and it slows down the whole course, which can last for an entire day. Yeah, I thought it was going to rain. No rain in sight. And a perfect day to hit Black Lake. But this was going to be a rain or shine crowd. It's the first day of fishing season, after all. Bass, trout, perch, all kinds of different fish. Jeff Buchanan's got a heart condition, so he's been reluctant to go out, but he couldn't resist this. I haven't had a nibble. Even a bad day of fishing is better than a good day on quarantine. We take it for granted, I believe. Now we probably won't be. If a fish and wildlife officer spots a couple of fishing buddies a little too close, the state's not looking at writing a bunch of tickets. They'll probably just get a talking to. However, if you don't have a fishing license, the state says you can expect to be cited. In Tumwater, Drew Mickelson. King 5 News. Thank you, Drew. Well, as more and more activities open up across the state, not everything is back to business. Today, national parks across the state said that they are hoping to reopen by the end of May. Some areas of parks are open right now, but many trailheads and recreational sites are closed. Most of these areas have been closed since winter, so maintenance needs uh, to be done before you're going to be able to safely go back out on those trails. As part one of the phase one reopening, 100 state parks are back open, but with new rules tonight. Sky King found hikers taking advantage of the rule change today on Tiger Mountain. You still cannot camp. Don't expect the bathrooms to be open and not every park is open. So check before leaving your home. State parks are also urging people to pick something close to home. And if the parking lot is crowded, they say come back another day. Well, as you think about heading to your favorite state park, we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite? Kim says Fort Warden. Sheena says Salt Water State Park in Des Moines. Alicia says Sun Lakes State Park near Cooley City in Eastern Washington. Some great picks from you. If you want to share your favorite state park, just go to the King 5 Facebook page or use the hashtag K5 on other social media. Well, making more off of unemployment in tonight's Your Money, Your Future, what you need to know if you're called back into work. Give us our gym. Loyal members protest their right to work out. And it could be just a few more weeks until we can all eat out again. The challenges facing restaurants as they prepare to reopen their doors.